It's time for the 1997 edition of Classic Video Reflections, featuring the people, the cars, and the fun of the North Texas region of the Classic Car Club of America. Christmas found us at Dallas Fair Park. Is this a mock mobile? Uh -huh. You picked a good one. <laughs> what a cute, what an absolute gorgeous car. with all our classic car club friends is a little hard to tell, but it looks like everybody had a pretty good time this Christmas. Yeah. 
Jim and D.G. Bannon sent their silver ghost to Australia for what should have been the trip of a lifetime. Well, it probably was the trip of a lifetime, but it didn't work out quite the way they planned. But they were kind enough to tell us about their adventure at Phil and Pat McConnell's house, which made a great meeting for our Classic Car Club friends. You'll have to hear about the car in Classic Reflections, but here's what happened at the meeting. And I wanted to see their tour. I was very interested in it. I'd never known anybody that took a car someplace and then it didn't get there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're thrilled that you're here, and it's a great group. And just in case you don't know, this is Jim Bannon and his wife, T.G., and they're going to talk about the Holy Ghost tour to Australia. The club is worldwide, even though it's under the auspices of the RROC here in America, which they're now talking about breaking away from because of their recent problems. But uh, there is a branch in Australia, there's a branch in England, but the main one is here in the United States, uh, or the Silver Ghost Registry in England. Uh, somebody right now is trying to compile all of this information just to find out if there are any known. But they keep showing up in Hemings, that's where most of them are coming from. They just show up out of the blue, nobody knows they're there. Every year, each one of these branches has a tour that is a national, of national scope. And uh, other countries are invited. Everybody that has a ghost is invited to come on. And also there's the frozen um, But uh, they allotted 50 slots for ghosts for this tour, and they sold out in September for the tour of June. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, ha I just have a door prize, but y'all were so nice to come and listen to our, our story here, and we're delighted to share it with everybody. So you have a little number on your name tag, and you don't get to capture it. What's your favorite number? <laughs> Up to 33. 33? Oh, yeah, no higher than that. Uh, 18. Anybody <laughs> got number 18? Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. If it's springtime, it must be time for chili in Texas. Looks like everyone had a good time this time. <laughs> we have here today is a very spicy, spicy sauce. Here, a little bit of chili. Take some cake. What are these? Some sort of garnish? Things falling out of Chuck's Creek. Huh? Hello, Hello Rachel. Brother and stupid. Do you know more? Classic car weather. Couldn't be better if we ordered it up. We are entitled to and get the best. Like peppers? Yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Taking your picture. We will have a great day. Oh, I, I buy that. The beans are sort of stuffing. God, am I an elegant company. I've got to look profound. And yet, yet, he's still at it.
coming. This is a wonderful turnout, and I want to thank Pat for Pat for uh, promoting this event and the Conrads for having such a wonderful, wonderful day uh, here in their uh, home and, and opening up their house to us. Uh, particularly, a uh, note is a thank you. Sir. Particular note, if you haven't seen it already, is this uh, it's non-classic, but nevertheless, uh, we'll still give a round of applause uh, to that wonderful Buick that uh, they have just had restored yeah. in their backyard. It's a terrific, oh, terrific yeah. thing. I'd like to now uh, turn the event over to uh, Pat and, uh, and the judging. I can't thank you all enough for bringing everything. We've never had 12 chilies. <laughs> and we have over 75 people here today. And I think that's just marvelous. And you all went to church because look at the day we had. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, we have some very serious judges this time. And at this time, I would like the judges to stand wherever they are. I see Jim Lake and Mort Kahn and Lawrence Marcus. Now Jim and Lawrence have judged before, as you very well know, but Mort's new and he did that on a, a favor from the Hussies and the McConnells and we do appreciate it. We hope they were nice to you, Mort. Which ones are they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first I thought I'd tell you how we judge this year. Oh, please do. <laughs> This is my share. Is it too late? <laughs> and I want you to know how varied your judges were. We have a native of Kilgore, Texas. You can't hear? Can you hear now? Yes. Take your glasses off, maybe. You hear. Does he want to hear? <laughs> native of Kilgore, Texas, Jim Lake. Uh, Mark Kahn is and well qualified. Who's never had chili before? <laughs> From Chicago. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, who, before I came over here this afternoon, uh, sampled some chili at home, so I had a standard. So you can see between the various impartial and diverse origins, we had many different points of view about the excellent chili. Um, there are supposed to be three awards, but there is a fourth award, which we're going to announce first. And that is least likely to succeed. <laughs> I don't know that I got the right number. <laughs> Explain it to us, will you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. White chili. It's turkey and white beans. Oh, yeah. Turkey and white beans. Okay. <laughs> Leave it <laughs> now, now we're going. <laughs> we thought turkey. <laughs> okay. The third prize. In fact, these were all very good. So we, we, we went back and we got samples again. You know, we're all got indigestion. <laughs> uh, number three got the third prize. Who's that? Green, Green pot. pot. Who is it? It may be Lady Price. Fifth prize. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. know either so we have our getaway car motor running <laughs> just in case this is an unpopular decision number two second place was number one that's it that end know that I guess our, our, our criteria were, uh, generally speaking, not necessarily in this order, 
but lack of fat, uh, zesty flavor, uh, not too grainy a meat, but not too mushy a uh, overall texture. Those are among the things that if we left something out, we were probably thinking of that too. <laughs> And so, first prize was number 10. In the, the pastel pot. Phil, is this your job? Thank you, everybody. We all traveled to Waco, Texas, a little bit of common territory, to go meet our friends with the Lone Star Regional Classic Car Club for their Grand Classic.
we're being, we're being photographed by our friendly Judge. traveling. Are we being judged through photographs? <laughs> So when did you leave Dubai? And then they passed themselves out of our market. Plus, the last time I talked to them, they were so far in the future. We're going to be alive then. Oh, it may not. We're going to bring maybe six or seven more. The best man I know on a video camera. I'm not so sure he's trying to suck that in a little bit there. I don't need to. I'm standing beside you. Hey, that looks like a Monet to me. Yeah, you. It is Monet. Monet. Giuseppe Monet. He's a Giuseppe Monet. We welcome you officially to the 1997 Southwestern Grand Classic. We are absolutely ecstatic, delighted, and very pleased that so many of you joined us for this weekend and that so many of you brought so many magnificent cars. Uh, I've had fun, I hope you have. Talk about people. We had a total of 26 cars registered uh, for judging. 23 uh, arrived on the field for judging. We had 11 exhibition cars registered with nine on the field for a total of 32 cars. So we were about on par with the other Grand Classics in terms of numbers of cars represented. And I reported that the temperature where we were was in the 70s, and the temperature outside was in the 70s, and most of us never saw it. <laughs> and uh, we had a total of nine 100 point cars from this meeting. Our spring tour found us starting in Waxahachie for lunch and a tour so of the downtown area awesome by Steve Chapman. Yeah, and we were off to Grand Dura. We should be. Time for my obligatory pictures of people eating here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> placed on the cotton economy. This courthouse was built in 1895-96. The architect was James Riley Gardner. He designed many of the outstanding Romanesque uh, courthouses of this general style. Unique to Texas, I'm informed, or at least nearly so, is the courthouse that presents with four equal entrances. No merchant had to be the backside working behind the courthouse. It's on the square and each side is, is equal, each of the four doors. Can you see? The land is in the face instead of the land. Over here, over here are faces. And over here is one of those pretty girls. Yeah, that's right. It's more like a lion. It's a lion, isn't it, right here? 
I missed it uh, because you know, I just looked and looked and I couldn't yeah. see anything. Yeah, that, yeah it said about the sunset on your left, it wound up being on our right. Yeah, yeah, yeah but there was another one. Was there possibly another one? On the left? Pat and I have an alternative. No, I'm just because. Phil, tell me you packed the glasses. I don't know. I have Okay, for guest number one, ready. Let's see if they're all the same first. Okay, they all start with seven, four, five. So I'm gonna just do the last three. Okay. Nine oh four. Oh, that's close. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nine oh four. Wait, 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 wait. Eugene. Everybody, better look at your tickets over here. Oh, Gene, have you got yours? Okay, ready? No bear, Gene. 9-11. No, that's close. I got 9-12. Jim? Okay, there you go. It's priceless gift. I don't know which one is. 904. We're still waiting for 904. Gene, what do you got? 893. Damn, it's close, but not quite. 893. There you go. 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 There you go.
it again? You have to be a pretty small person to fit in this car very comfortably. Your knees are jammed right up under the dash. <laughs> Jeez.
unsuspecting public. It's a contagious disease. Big old disease. Yeah. 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 Great. 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 NTR's annual meeting at the Power Club this year is always a special event, but this year it's our 25th anniversary. Founding member Bill Mott. Well, I don't know if I was a founding member. I was in the first first meeting and joined me. I think some of the others got together and got the paperwork done. Cheers to you. I don't think so. Just 
Chuck. Yes. Hi, Chuck. Hi. That uh, I wouldn't get that together. I won't uh, go into all the events of this year, but I particularly uh, found a lot of fun, uh, the trip to Granbury uh, that uh, our friend Pat uh, arranged, and uh, also I thought uh, particularly significant was the uh, concourse that we had and how well it was done, what a beautiful time it was, and of course uh, the event raised $95,000 for the symphony orchestra, which is a great achievement. Uh, I, at this time, would like to particularly recognize two people uh, that helped me a great deal, three people that helped us a great deal this year, and uh, if they would come forward, I'd appreciate it. I mentioned it in my letter in the Classic Reflections, which you should have gotten uh, in the mail. Of course, a lot of people helped, but Pat McConnell, I thought, did a particularly outstanding job in helping us uh, arrange for the activities, and I would also like to have Diane and Chuck Conrad come up because uh, everywhere you look in these events, they're always there helping, and in particular, the Concours, I think, uh, did uh, extremely well because of their active support and, and leadership. Would you please come forward and I'd like to... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. This, this might be called the uh, Regional Director's Awards uh, for outstanding service and helping this year be so successful. We've only been in the club three years, and the fourth year is just starting for us, and. Uh, you know, our goal for 98 is going to be membership. And if we can make these new members feel as welcome as everyone has made Joy and me feel, uh, we're not going to have any problems. So thank you all. Uh, but it's really great to be here with all these founding members. You know, you founding members that met out there on Flagpole Hill in August of 72, if you drove, if you're a member of another club and you drove a new car to Flagpole Hill, it would be an antique now. <laughs> so that's another club. Come on, Hamber. Do it even though it's not wide angle. All right. Perfect. Here we go. One, two, three. John, come forward just a little bit, well, if you I, would, please. Uh, Hubert's stomach's in my way. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There is a paragraph, though, and and uh, uh, maybe you can interpret it for me. It said, "Gradually, conditions have changed. The classics are getting more valuable, and the owners are not willing to subject themselves to the same driving distance." But mostly the drivers of classics are getting older and softer. <laughs> this is 1972. What do we chop liver today? <laughs> Great thanks, sir. Thank you. For those of you who I haven't met, and there are a few in the room, my name is Fred Teicher, and cars has not only been my hobby, some people, including Karina, said it's been my obsession, and I have pursued it diligently. And it's amazing how 25 years has passed by so quickly that we've all had a marvelous time. And the first one I'd like to call upon to come up here to say a few words is <coughs> our first leader, Hubert Cook. Here, here. I'm not much of a public speaker, but you'll find out you don't know it already. <clears throat> Those are very kind words, Fred. We've been friends for 35 years, and that's the first time you ever said something nice about me. <laughs> I've been busy at home fighting the old age problem. Uh, I'm sorry to report that I'm losing the battle. The last time, uh, <laughs> To get the background of how this region was formed, 
<coughs> the Classic Car Club was formed in 1953. Oil Belt Region, 1960. North Texas Region, 1972. That means that for 12 years, this area was under the control of the Oil Belt Region. They had about six meetings a year. Two or three were in North Texas, the rest of them in Oklahoma. It worked out pretty good. We had to get our old cars out with our retread tires and so forth, drive 200 miles to Tulsa, go on Friday, have meetings up there Saturday, come back Sunday. It worked out pretty good. Over the years, we finally got to where there were classic cars from that area showed up and from 200 miles away, uh, modern cars, lots of modern Cadillacs. Uh, we didn't like that too well. <laughs> we decided to break away from the oil belt region and have our own region down here in North Texas. The oil belt region didn't like it. They objected to it. They told John Wimple at <laughs> National about it. <laughs> if you ever want to do a favor for me, reimburse me for the telephone calls I <laughs> had with John Wimple. <laughs> I had a few unchristian-like thoughts about the man. Uh, I was a regional director for 18 months before we got our charter. We finally got it, and we're very happy that we did get it. The Classic Car Club has been a wonderful thing for me. I've had fun. Uh, my crowning achievement was getting national to allow caravans to be held other than August. When I first talked to them about having a caravan in Texas, they said, caravans always been in August? They always will be in August. That's the way they figured things. Uh, I finally got permission, and we had the Texas Blue Bonnet Caravan in 1976. That's my crowning achievement of all time. <laughs> And I'm really not as old as I look, you have to understand. <laughs> and why I got invited to go to this meeting at the 21 Club is totally beyond me because I was just a snotty nosed kid at the time. <laughs> and all these other people were old and had all of these fancy cars and, and uh, Hubert, uh, you know, was the granddaddy of the whole bunch. And uh, I, I guess Fred just felt sorry for me or something and, and invited me to come to this meeting and I got stuck with doing a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, uh, when we got to be a a, a, a a formal region of the Classic Car Club, um, the nine of us that that agreed to serve on the on the board, uh, three of them took one year, three of them took two years, and three of them took three years. Well, I got one of the three years stints. Well, it wound up I spent nine years on the damn board of directors of this club. <laughs> Finally got elected to be the the, uh, the director, and uh, it's been a ball ever since. Uh, the really the only thing that I've missed by moving down to the lake was the friendship that I've had with the group, the people that uh, are in the club, the activities that we had, and I come back every chance I get, and I hope you will continue to keep this club active, keep it going strong, and it looks like it's doing real good now, and I will be back every chance I have. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that uh, before I turn the microphone back to our new regional director, I would like to, if we could bow our heads for a moment of remembrance of some of the guys who really could have been here tonight, but just didn't make it all the way. And I'd like to read out their names. And we've been on a marathon. We've had a heck of a good time. And some of these names might have been oil belt region as we were moving from oil belt into North Texas, but uh, Jim Davey, Ken Brewer, Jim Watson, Jack Hildreth, Bill Humph no, Bob Shade, Fred Schuster, Spike Russell, Victoria Tennant, Earl Givens, Jim Pullen, Jay Leone, Bob Atwell, Al Pabst, and Aggie Pate. Mm -hmm. And these are people that would have been here tonight, I'm sure, if they could have. And thank you very much for allowing us old-timers to reminisce and have a good time, and hopefully we'll 
be able to celebrate further in. Yes. Could I make a couple of comments? Surely, Gene. Since we're reminiscing tonight, I want you to know that I predate all the classic car clubs and everything else. <laughs> I've been a nut since a kid about old cars, and I saw 16 cylinder Cadillac Phaeton one time. I wanted to buy it. it, was only, it was, I asked what they wanted, they said $750. I said, oh, that's, too old. that's too much for an old car. Mm. But I didn't get it. So later on, <clears throat> I'm driving into San Antonio on a business trip, and this is in the early 50s, 1950, and I saw this beautiful Packard sitting in a dealer's lot. I stopped and looked at it and took a drive around the block. And I said, this car drives beautifully. And I went back and asked what they wanted for. They said $650. I said, that's too much for an old used car. I'll give you uh, $475. And they said, well, it just came out of an estate. Had 22,000 miles on, all original. Just came out of the state. We'll have to check with them. <coughs> so I said, "Well, I'll be down at the Gunner Hotel all day tomorrow and give my card. If they want to take it, call me." They did call me. So I drove the Cadillac I was driving out there, picked it up, and drove it back to Dallas. I drove in the front driveway. And Dorothy had thought I'd lost my mind. <laughs> she, she said, well, what are you going to do with that old car? I said, I'm just going to have fun with it. We drove it around town for some time. This is for the classic era and everything. And I ran into Jack Hildes one day and met him. He said, you know what you got there? I said, yeah, 1937 Packard Super 8. He said, you know what's a classic? I said, what's a classic? <laughs> well, that opened up the purse strings. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I got interested in classics. But I was there before the classics in my desires and admiration of all these old cars. And I just want to mention that since we're reminiscing. Yeah. Uh, well, you can see that this has had some pretty rough use. Yeah. And the first one you'll see is Rayford Reese, 1980, and I don't know whether he was the one that caused all the damage to this or not, but, but uh, Regional Director, it's yours well, from now, and you, you can guys. excuse this meeting when you thank feel like Well, uh, you know, this really is a, a, a wonderful honor. We're, we're pleased to be here, and as Buzz says, we do need to thank our, our spouses for this. Uh, I know Joy gets awful tired of it. You know, we bought a house last year, and, and uh, I found this house, and I said, you're not going to believe this house. You're going to love it. This thing's got six garages. <laughs> I said, well, what? Tell me, but it's got six garages. With it. But uh, so we got, and, and we're adding on to the garage. So, uh, but no, we love the hobby. We've. Uh, uh, Joy and I have been married a long time. We've always loved cars, and uh, it was not to, but a few years ago that we really understood the difference between classic cars and all that other stuff that's out there. <laughs> we want to make sure we preserve the classics. That's the idea behind all of this. We want to preserve and enjoy these classics. Uh, let's all go to Berta and Jim's at Christmas and then turn out in San Antonio. Yeah. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>